Hello, everybody. It's T with T Quilts. Today is July 8th, 2020. It is almost 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you're watching this at any other time, just know that you are watching an upload of a live chat. So we will wait for people to come into the room. Welcome, we're just waiting for more people to come into the chat room. Put some lotion on my hands. We're just waiting for people to come into the chat room. <clears throat> See what time it is. 702. <laughs> so it's been a week since I've been on live. Ever since um, we've been on this pandemic, I have been kind of working. I've been busier than I have been when I was not <laughs> uh, not doing a pandemic. I probably have already quilted more customer quilts this year than I have in any other previous year. So I think um, I got like a real bad sinus infection. I didn't lose my voice completely, but I had some different symptoms that I'd never had before, so I just figured that I needed to take some time off just to uh, relax. I have not sewn anything since I finished the um, mini quilt, and then I did that video for my finishes for the month of June. So I have not done anything else quilt related um, since then. I've been kind of just uh, hoovering around my bed uh, it seems like sometimes when I was up for a long period of time that I would start to get dizzy. And I think some of that had something to do with my glasses. The fact that I've been wearing my bifocals with one lens. I did go to the eye doctor today. And the lady there had a, a lens that fit just to put something on it on the other side to balance it out. So I think that was part of my issues as well with uh, equilibrium. And then I also have very low tolerance for medications. And so when I'm taking my sinus meds, sometimes they make me sleepy. So I felt like maybe I wasn't getting enough sleep with the sinus meds. So I just decided to um, chill because there were times that I couldn't even be out of bed more than like 15 minutes. So I just decided to only get out of bed to fix myself something to eat, to uh, restroom breaks, and just stood out on the porch for a few minutes just to get some sun. So I appreciate you all's patience while I've been missing in the past week. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my cell phone on so I can go ahead and see who's all in the chat room. But um, I just think um, I had three factors that just probably all came in together and just presented themselves to the point where I just couldn't do anything. I just had to just sit and chill. So that's what I decided to do. So, I'm gonna pull you guys up. I hope everybody's had a great week. I'm gonna have to plug this phone in. I forgot. 
that I didn't have much power because I've been out at the doctor's office and then I'm waiting. <laughs> so I um been playing on my phone. Um Let's see. My glasses are so dirty because I <laughs> I forgot to clean them uh, from me taking them off and on at the doctor's office. And then I went trying to get some. I went to an eyeglass place trying to get my, um, my prescriptions filled. And I had one place tell me that they wanted almost, it was like a little over $900 for two pair of glasses. Now I do have bifocals and I have transitional lenses and I just felt like that was quite a bit of money I don't ever recall spending that kind of money on glasses but uh, I decided uh, to wait until tomorrow because I'm gonna go somewhere else and see if I can get a second opinion on uh, how much these glasses are gonna cost me so so let's see who's in the chat room I gotta go all the way to the top you all are already commenting so thank you so much we got mary here she says hi i heard you were ailing i'm sorry and hope you're better crystal cochran is here saying interwoven creations by crystal hi t uh cheryl says hello vivian says hi t melinda is here saying hello t and quilting friends thumbs up guys before we forget that's right melinda thank you so much nisi Moss here says hey t and everybody Darlene Farmer is here, says, greetings from Northern Virginia. <laughs> uh, Sharice Fofi says, hello, everyone. Hi, T. Quilting for the Soul, which is Sharon, says, hello, T, and everyone. C-Rock says, hi, T, and friends. Diane57 is here, says, hey, T, how are you doing? My brother is here. He says, hey, sis, I'm here. How, everyone? Hope everyone is still staying safe. Maria Mayer is here, says hi T and everyone. Slowing Down Joe says hello T and everyone. Cheryl Bean is here, she says hello T and everyone. Glad to see you back. Uh, Betty Harris is here, says good afternoon to everyone. Vicki Lemire is here saying hello. Uh, Cheryl Klutz here says driving, but I am here. Stay safe, Cheryl. Teresa Louise, I quilt too, says hi T. Peggy O'Connor is here. She says, hi, TNT Quilters. Love your t-shirt, T. Thank you. I had one similar to this when I was line dancing, and I thought, oh, that would be really cute. And I, when I did that t-shirt order back in June, I added this one shirt on just to see how it would look, and I really like this shirt. Um, Let's see. Melissa LePage is here. She says, hello, or hi, T, and hello, everyone. <laughs> um, let's see. Joan Elkins is here. She says, hi, T, stay safe, and hello, everyone. Uh, Kimberly Dion is here saying hello. Cool Gals here says, hi, T, and everyone from hot and humid Maryland. See, June Billings is here, says hi T and everyone. Uh, Vicky's saying that I'm buffering. I don't see where I'm buffering yet, so try to refresh Vicky. Um, Elaine Doucette's here, says, oh, I don't know what BH is, <laughs> but hi Elaine. Um, Doris O is here, says good evening TNT Quilters. Glad you are doing better. Crystal uh, says, I'm glad you got some much needed rest. Take care of yourself. Elaine saying, happy to see you. Um, and Peggy saying, sorry you haven't been feeling well. Um, saw the finishes. This is from Melissa, says they were awesome. Robotics are keeping you very busy. You just wore yourself down, rest up. Your hair looks wonderful. Thank you so much, Melissa. Uh, Jada Smith is here, says, hi, T and Quilt family. Hoping everyone is feeling good. T, you need to rest and take care of yourself. I know that feeling. It's Earlene here. Uh, thank you so much, Earlene. Quilt Gal says, I love your 
tougher than tank top. <laughs> it's that old style tie dye, which I think I like because I always like tie dye and I like a whole lot of color. So I decided to try it out, but I like it. Um, Teresa saying, I hope you're feeling better. Cheryl says, glad you are doing better. Carl Green is here. She says, hi, T. It's nice to see you're better. Hi, all. Um, uh, and Peggy's saying, whoa, that's too much money. Smart to get another opinion. Yes, honey. I, I can recall paying maybe $500 for two pair of glasses by the time they give you like 50% off the second pair. Um, the thing is that frames cost a lot of money. You know, you, I have never been able to find a frame in the eyeglass place that was under $200. But then if you bring in your own frames, then you don't get the discount on half off the glasses. And what was so funny was that this place was telling me that they were giving me half off both pair of glasses, frames and glasses. And I'm like, and you're telling me that's 900 and it was like $916. And she said, yeah, she says it's with our, um, I have astigmatism. I have uh, my distance. Like I can read everything up close, but I can't see anything far away. So the difference between that to make everything mesh up, um, you know, I need a particular, uh, in order not to make my glasses thick, I needed a particular type of lens and then um, which my glasses I have on now are not thick, so I don't understand. So I did, um, I didn't want to go to the place that made these glasses that I have on, but I went ahead and made an appointment. They have like had a turnover in employee and I just feel like they're kind of rude. And so I didn't really want to go there, but I decided that I probably need to go back there and get a second opinion. I did call, made an appointment for tomorrow and I'm going to see what the glasses cost there. And the woman told me that I was in a mid range. They have, uh, you have your regular plastic, you have poly, uh, plastic, and then there is some kind of high index plastic or something. I don't know what that even means, but the woman there told me that I was in their mid range. But they didn't even mention a mid-range level at the other place. But even when they put me in regular plastic, it still was at $768. And I just told her I needed to think about it because, uh, like I told you all before, glasses are kind of like the first thing you see on a person's face. So if I'm going to spend $760, what's the difference in spending, a, you know, $916, if, you know, to get the better, thinner lens, if that was the case. But I just needed time to think about it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go back to the place that I got these from. I had, I know I got two pair and I, I know it probably was in 500 range. Cause I, like I said, transitional lenses do cost a lot of money. They cost more, but we're going to see tomorrow. I can't wait. <laughs> I did call my cousin who's in Detroit. She likes uh, designer glasses and she always has like the real fancy stuff. I think she must buy her her glasses and just take them to the place and then just get them filled. But she was saying, girl, I spend almost $900 on just one pair of glasses. And I'm like, oh my God, let me quit complaining. So then I come home and ask my husband. He went earlier this year, got two pair of glasses, but he went to, he went to America's uh, Best. You know, where you can get two pair of glasses and an eye exam for 69 But we never get the cheap frames. But he still said that he ended up paying like less than 300 for two pair. But he doesn't get any transitionals and stuff like that. So, so I'm going to um, go see what this other place is talking about tomorrow. So hopefully I'll come up with something different. You know, I'll pay for what I need. But I don't want to be just wasting my money just because I'm at a particular establishment and they're requiring me to spend that money so um T you you look pretty 
today love your hair i'm glad you're feeling better thank you so much that is hi all yes nice t-shirt thank you so much i'm getting notifications on stuff from apps <laughs> it's like go away uh teresa mccormick is here she says hello t and everyone Oh, Quilting for the Soul says, no, I'm, I thought that's who I said, Sarah. I, I must have really mixed it up. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I don't know who I called Sarah then. I'm sorry if I called you Sarah. That's who I meant was Quilting for the Soul, so I really messed that up. Um, uh, Leetta Bryant is here. She says, hi, TNT Quilters. And Elaine saying her keyboard is wonky today. <laughs> Remo Jazz says, good evening, Miss T and Quilters from Bowie, Maryland. And then um, Mary saying, one thing about cataract surgery, you get one pair of glasses, free glasses, yippee. They didn't get my mom a free pair of glasses, but it was so funny when my mom had her cataract surgery when she got through with the second eye, she had 2020 vision. She didn't, they told her she might need to go get readers because my mom is farsighted, but she didn't even need to get readers. That woman can see everything now. So, Cheryl's asking, Do you have an America, America's Best? Yes, I do. I don't know if it was before I talked about it, but that's where my husband go. And I do know that I never buy the. I never buy the frames that they say you can get the two pair for $65 or $69, whatever their magic price is. I never get that because those frames just don't look good. They're just cheap plastic. You can tell that they're cheap plastic frames. So even my husband didn't even get those. We got Melissa. She's giving me a $10 uh, thing. She says, did you see Erica Selman rank her favorite YouTuber? Quilters, you made number one. Yes, I did. And I wrote, uh, Erica, thank you, on her site. I remember um, it's been a while ago when Erica first started out. She was asking, she wasn't, she first started out on YouTube. She was getting, wasn't asking about YouTube. She was asking me how to become a person that present to quilt gills. That's when she, when she heard me talking about that. That was her interest in what she really wants to do. And I feel like, you know, Erica, she's a teacher. So just going into teaching quilting would be her next logical thing to do. So I kind of helped her with that, told her how to get started with that. So, but all of that right now is on a whole. So we'll have to come back to that kind of stuff. Let me go back because um, Melissa made the screen jump up a little bit. <laughs> Um, hold on. So, Remo is saying hit the thumbs up. Thank you so much. Uh, Eric Oda is here. Hi, Eric. He says, hello, hello. And Diane is asking, you're nearsighted. Yes, I am. I am nearsighted. I can see everything up close. And I, I can read without my glasses and everything. But, um... It got to the point where my vision for closeness and far away got so bad, so far apart that they had to put me in bifocals. And I think most people that happens to them at 40, and I had to be probably 49 or something when I ended up going into bifocals. So it took me a while. Uh, and C-Rack says Ev prices for everything has increased. And I do understand that. But I just want to make sure that from 500 to three years ago, I rem I bought these glasses three years ago. That seems like an awful big jump. And, and they did tell me that they now use a different lab. So it could be the lab that they're using. But I just, like I said, when you're telling me that something's almost double what I would normally spend, it it's about... Um... It's about like an, a 40% increase. If I pay 500 and I'm paying almost 1,000, that's 40% um, increase. I think I need to look and double check and make sure. And then she calls herself trying to play in the computer to see if she can do something to get the 
price is lower. Like I said, she was telling me that she had 40, 50% off each pair of glass. I'm like, hell, what kind of glasses am I getting? <laughs> and then when the total came up, it was like she was scared to even tell me the total. It was crazy. She knew that number was high too. Um, let's see. Betty Harris says, I finally got the idea of crumb quilts. It's good therapy for arthritis in my hand. Oh, that's pretty cool. I love it because you don't have to worry about fabrics matching, seams matching, anything. You just sew whatever you got together. That's what's really nice about crumb piecing. Uh, Etty, do you have a success vision? They are a lot cheaper. Not as much selection, but the prices are good. I don't know anything about that. But if it's anything similar to like America's Best, I haven't seen that around here. Um, Joan Elkins is saying there has to be cheaper place for glasses. And you can order glasses online. And I do know that there are a lot of companies. They hit me up trying to get me to uh, get glasses from them. Uh, one company even was trying to get me to do... Uh, uh, a free thing where I just promote them on my YouTube channel. My thing is I've ordered from one company and then, you know, people, companies don't want a bad rating. And my glasses came back looking like this dull, shitty piece of plastic that I don't really want to wear on my face. So I just, uh, that was about, it had to be three years ago because they with my old three-year prescription. So I opted not to do that video. And I can't even remember which company it was that I actually ordered from. Um, but I did not like the glasses. So I have a hard time. I know the glasses are cheap. But I want to make sure when I got bifocals, how do they know my depth? Uh, the things that they check when you go in to get your glasses. How do you know where my eyeballs actually sit? So it's certain things that... I just prefer to have my glasses made. I know it costs a whole hell of a lot more money. <laughs> and uh, But at least I'm knowing what I'm buying and what's going to sit on my face. So I don't know. It's, it's, you win, you lose, you know. So let me go back my screen. I took my hand off and it slid down again. So hold on. I can't remember where I left off now. Hold on. Um, hold on. Okay. And this is Mary saying, I have trifocals and they are very expensive. Yes, and I just hope I never have to get them. Um... I'm hoping I haven't missed anybody coming in. Google for you. My script change every six months. I don't know what you're telling me. Googles? Oh, goggles. I'm sorry. That's why I can't read it. Goggles for you. Okay, that's the one that Remo is saying. Maddie Barman is here. Bar Barnum is here. It says, hey, T, I love your hair. Just got here. Hello to everyone. Thank you, Maddie. Appreciate that. Mary says, I had a college professor who was married to an opt optometrist, and every class she had a different pair of glasses on. <laughs> that's funny. And that's why I opted to, like, I stopped getting my eye exams at the same place where I get my glasses. I decided to start going to an optometrist and get my eyes examined because they have no interest in selling you glasses and or giving you unnecessary tests. So I had been going to this one place for, for years, and then all of a sudden, I was telling them that I didn't want any tests that my insurance wasn't going to pay. And every time they give me a test, I would say, is this covered? And then they would say yes. So it went well for years, and then all of a sudden, one year, I get a bill after I had paid for all my glasses and stuff. And then I get a bill for another couple hundred dollars. I'm like, for a test that my insurance wouldn't pay for. So 
I just don't like people giving me unnecessary tests. I want to know what my glasses cost, and I want to know what this exam is going to cost me. So that's why I decided to break them up. Um, Graham says here, says, hello, T and everyone. And Quilting for the Soul says, I'm Sarah Eric. <laughs> Um, Diane says, mine's are expensive because I have such bad eyesight. And I, that's one of the reasons why I don't get like really big glasses. I really would like to like buy bigger glasses, but my vision is so bad, um, uh, that it's hard to sit a prescription in. It's just not recommended. And it makes your glasses be really, really thick when you get big frames. So I try to stick to some small, uh, frames or more rectangular frames more than round Let's see. Cheryl says, I paid $2.90 for two pairs. One was bifocal. And I'm trying to get both bifocal, both with transitional lenses and um, both with progressive lens. And progressive lens means that you don't see the bifocal line. Like my husband, he didn't worry about any of that. I think that's something that mostly women worry about. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Diane Ricks is here. Says, hello, T and everyone. Welcome. Um, Susan T is here says hello T and everyone it's hot here in Pennsylvania I think it's hot everyone <laughs> everywhere <laughs> so yeah and Di uh, Diane says that she's farsighted so the biggest part of my glasses which is up here when you got the bifocal uh, that's where they're putting in my corrective lens because I can kind of see down here. So, yeah, I just I just can't see. I can see everything up close. I can read and all of that. No headaches, but nothing else after that. Lisa Pegg is here. She says, hello, T. Hey, everyone. Um, Judy says, hi, T and everyone. Happy Wednesday. Melissa says, I like her projects a lot. June Hansen says, hi, T and everyone. And she's talking about Erica. Kim Burrs is here, says, hi, T quilts and everyone. Hey, Kim. Um, Eric says, I'm baking at home. It's about 1,000 degrees in here or 10,000 degrees. Sorry, I missed the zero. <laughs> it's funny. What you baking, Eric? I'm sure they'd already asked. We got Kathy Klein here. She says, hello from Decatur, Illinois. Welcome. And I'm just going to stop there for a minute. Bacon don't need an oven. Hold on. Let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. Cherie says American Best has a designer frame section. My daughter look at that section first. They love spending my money. Yes. And so I'm going to still be spending more money for frames. And that's why I didn't originally go to America's Best. But I went back to... The place I went to last year because I know that I did not like look at them like they had grew a second head when they told me what my glasses were going to cost. So I'm going to go back to where I went three years ago and see if they are anywhere under $600 or in that range uh, with the mid-grade lenses. I don't want the cheap lenses. So if I can get that there, then I'll just go ahead and get my glasses made there. Um... Sue says, good to see you tonight. Looking forward to the exploding star pattern. Stay healthy. Hey, Sue. Awesome. Um, and I haven't... I, yeah, I went to the post office today because I got this package. I'll talk about it in a second. Um, Cheryl says, I worked in optical inter industry about 20 years ago. The lens are pennies and the frames cheap also. They write them up 500% and that I do know. And it's like, <laughs> this woman looked at me and trying to tell me these prices. There is no way that I'm going to be paying $500 for a pair of glasses. I'm just not going to do it. Not for one pair. I don't care what's in them. Um...
And Cheryl says, my frame from America's Best are metal. And I used to get metal frames, but I uh, I would bend those things up so bad. <laughs> so I, would, I do kind of like plastic frames, but I like pl my plastic frames or quality frames. They're like, uh, let me see what name is on these. Inez. And then on the side, I do have, it's still plastic, but it looks like metal. But they Inez. And then most of the time, I'm getting BB glasses uh, for the most part because those are the ones that I tend to like the most. And then they got like an Ann Klein. I tend to go with those lenses. And then, and that's only because those are the two companies that has the smaller ones. And then most of the other companies, they just do really big because that's what's in style. So a lot of them only do what's in style. Whereas I can't wear necessarily what's in style. I have to wear what my prescription fits best in. And I ac learned that accidentally because nobody ever told me. And it was like the first time when a small uh, frames were in, uh, I noticed that I could see a whole lot better. And nobody actually told me that. And let's see. I jumped again, guys. I think it was somebody saying something about the um about having metal frames. Yeah. Yeah, that was Cheryl. Okay. Lisa says, I have frameless trifocals, love them. I have never had frameless glasses because I've had the ones where they had the wire that go under and those things always popped out. I hated them glasses. So I don't know what the wireless ones look like. Let's see, okay, serious question. Does anyone know a good pattern using 2.5 in squares? I'm tired of making four patches and nine patches and insert number here patches. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you all answered. Eric, give him some ideas. Cherie says, I saw a scrappy log cabin made with 2.5 inch blocks. Too tedious for me, though. Never heard of a watercolor quilt. Hmm, let me Google that. I have done watercolor quilts. They're pretty, they're, I like them. It depends on what you're into at the time, but I've made a couple of those. Um, a lot of you all are talking to other people, so I'm going to skip some of them. But Judy Smith says, T, I'm here listening as I sort out my new sewing cottage. Grandson is up in one of the lofts. That's pretty cool. Got some company over there. And Mary says, I started a watercolor quilt about 10 years ago. I should get it out. <laughs> And I won't laugh because I got UFOs older than that, girl. Um, June Hansen says, my lenses are what is spendy. $300 for the frame. 300 frames under $100. I don't know what you're saying. I guess it's like, uh, it's kind of mixed up. But I know the frames that I was looking at, they were $229 for just the uh, eye frames but then again I was getting them at half price at this so-called place so if I took off 229 say 230 off of 920 I'm still paying what $600 for the lenses I just couldn't get it I didn't get it so Darlene says, my glasses are always expensive. I have regular glasses, reading glasses, computer glasses, you name it. All right. I'm going to skip down to the bottom. We got Sheila Willis here, says hi to you and everyone. And then I'm thinking I'm going to stop and start right there. But I wanted to open this up because I went to the mailbox the p.o box and this was the only thing in there and 
I was like, I haven't ordered anything. So then when you get Amazon, they do give you the choice of putting in a gift certificate so that I saw that this was a gift. It says, thank you for all you do for tea quilters. Now you can chill whenever you need to, Miss T, from Angela Stringer. So when I see that kind of stuff, I then just stop opening the package. So I will open up this package here. And uh, we will see what's in here. Not those. Those are not paper scissors. These are the ones I use for everything. So, we'll see tomorrow if that place was just giving me, feed me crap, or if my glasses are going to cost me <laughs> $900, okay? So, we'll see real soon. And then they still take like a week to two weeks. They don't really know what day your glasses are going to come in. So, you just have a week to... Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is like a, it's a neck fan. <laughs> Angela's funny. Look at that. It's a neck fan. <laughs> and it, the fans, it looks like it's got two fans that go on either side. And then they got, they rotate 360 degrees. That's funny. <laughs> and it looks like it has a USB on it. USB charging port, 360 rotation. Enough wind power, use long time, built-in battery, dazzling lights, security, security cool. <laughs> I don't know. Angela's going to make me, she probably dressing me with what I got here. This is blue. So I don't know if the blades are a different color. <laughs> and it has a USB in here as well. I'm sure it's not gonna come on oh it did it did come on so it has a low medium and high that is too funny let's see how this work looking real crazy <laughs> Hold on, let me get to this power button if I can find it now. I can't. But that's pretty funny. <laughs> Angela saw me sitting here too many times sweating, huh? <laughs> okay, low, medium, and high. I want to see how does this actually work to get it to your face. I wonder how that sound. Can you all hear that? Are you all laughing at me? I know I can see some of the smiley faces. <laughs> Angela is funny. The nice thing about this is that I don't have to hold it. I have to figure out how to put this on. And get this to where I can get it right in my face, okay? <laughs> that is too cute. <laughs> Thank you so much, Angela. I'm going to work on this. <laughs> and then they turn 360 degrees, which is nice. Yes. So I have to work on that. That's a pretty cool gift. Thank you so much. I'm going to put this back in the box so I can get it charged fully because it's flashing so i'm wondering if it'll go uh stronger if i um if i get it a full charge and charge that whole battery because it is flashing <laughs> um
And Diane talking about all she see is a blur without her glasses. Uh, Eric says, neck fan, I need one. <laughs> Mary's laughing, ha ha, I need a neck fan for school. They are so blasted hot. Yes, they are, but I, I'm going to charge that up and see if it blows a little bit harder. That will be awesome when I'm at my longhorn machine. Oh, my God, I hope that thing works. I hope it like works i hope it lasts a long time and then if it do i'm gonna contact the company <laughs> say hey i'm using this the long warm quilt with send me some um and darlene calls them menopause fans that's funny uh kimberly says oops got a new light box twenty dollars and Peggy saying, laughing out loud, Angela, those might be nice. Yes, I'm thinking if this works, it'd be great for retreats when you're, uh, you know, you don't have to actually hold on to it. And like most of the time we have, I take my little tabletop fan and, but if you move to, if I move from sewing to cutting to pressing, then I'm moving, but the fan is still in one place. So I tend to take two fans. I put one on each end of my table. But that will be really cool if it uh, lasts a long period of time. So I'm going to give it a full charge. And then next time I long warm quilt, I'm going to make sure I put that on. That's too funny. <laughs> cool girl says, Lord T, don't get your hair caught in those fans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely don't want that. And Cheryl says, I need one of them. I was thinking about getting a set of those. That was from Diane. Mary said, hmm, wonder if my elementary students would laugh. <laughs> they probably would, but they wish they had one too. Elementary is a lot easier on you than the high school. Um, and Diane says, we can barely hear it. So that's pretty cool to know too. It does, it did say that it had uh, like a quieter motor. <laughs> Melissa says she's going to have to get one to keep her eyeglasses from fogging up when she's wearing a mask. And I wonder if it'll work for that because that's a great idea. Eric says, T, repeat. Put the fan on and repeat after me. Tune in Tokyo. <laughs> You're so silly. <laughs> uh, June says she can't hear. Angela Stringer says, hi, T and T quotes. It's good that you see me have on that fan. Thank you so much, girl. I'm going to give it a charge because the light is flashing on it. And I'm hoping that I can really use that when I'm long warm quilting because I get hot, but I don't have space to put a fan over there. I have it at the end of my long arm. And it does keep the air circulating, but I don't feel any of it. So that's pretty cool. That is a funny gift, but I'm going to sure try it out and pray it works. Thank you so much, Angela. I appreciate that. Um... Elaine Doucette says, adorable. And then Anna says, press the tiny button. It has three speeds. Yes. And so she did see me wear it. I mean, see me doing it. So that's great. I was trying to wait until I read that Angela was in the chat room, but I never did see it. So I'm like, let me go ahead and just open it so I can uh, get it open. And Ma Diane says, now I won one of those. <laughs> Mm-mm. Uh, Mary says she's a music aide at two schools, 40 kids every 40 minutes for seven hours. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Melissa says you're a sweetie, Angela. Uh, Melinda says I need to get one for my hot flashes laughing out loud. Lisa, oh, she's asking, Lisa, do you have a 60-degree ruler? Do you have the folding mirror to help see the fabric? Okay. Angela says, if you have a USB on your sewing machine, you can plug it in and charge it right there. I got a USB on my sewing machine, but I didn't know. Then I have to, I have to cut the machine on for that, though, won't I? Let's see. 
don't have USB on this one. Let's see. I have to see which way to put this in. So I'm assuming I'm going to have to cut this on. That's a good thing to know if it'll work. Let me see. Because <laughs> it'll be great when you're at retreats. Because it does have a little short cord. So you can't, it's not beneficial to put into a, full, a floor one. It didn't come on. see where it's charging let me take it off and put it back on make sure I push it in it's not charging right there see if I get a light down here hold on I hate to put stuff on the floor that's you know with the short plug It doesn't say, it doesn't indicate that it's charging. My phone indicates that it's charging. It's just plugged in. I don't know, maybe it was working. I'm going to plug it in and just see, but I got a green flashing light. So, I'm going to leave it down there for, for a while. I guess I could have left it up here because I'm not getting a light down there, so... I think stacking wet quilts are beautiful, but I've never tried one. I have the pattern, just never did one. T can you, T, just put your hair up when using it? Yes, I can. I will be doing My hair is mostly up more than it's down. I take my hair down. It's time for me to uh, wash it. That's about what's going to happen. So that's the only reason my hair is down. My hair is mostly up. Uh, Claudette Bettis is here saying hello, everyone. He's telling, Eric's telling Claudette he was just in her neck of the woods at M&L Fabrics. Vivian Calvi is here, says, hey, T, I'm going to get me one of those fans. <laughs> uh, Lisa says, maybe we can do it together, talking to Kim about doing the stacking wet. And, um... Angela says, operator error. It says it's charging. Okay, so it doesn't have a charge indicator light on it. Um, my boyfriend did one with an oriental print, and it's all stunning, all reds, deep golds, black and cream. She's talking about the stack and whack. If you all don't know what stack and whack quilts are for people that are new here, I got a series of videos. So just search T quilts, stack and whack, uh, stack and whack. I got two videos where I'm, well, actually three videos where I'm talking about fabrics that will and won't work. Um, and then I have like the process video showing you how to cut your fabric out. yeah so i don't have anything to tell you all this week because <laughs> i didn't do anything one thing that i uh was going to do uh, and i pulled into this room so i could go through it i just want to show y'all this bag of fabrics that i got from kevin the quilter he's not here tonight he's probably working he normally yeah he's either like Wednesdays, if he's on his regular schedule, he's been off his regular schedule for a bit. But he normally is, uh, Wednesdays is his last day to fly. Sometimes he's at home. Sometimes he may be in the flight attendant's room checking stuff out. So I was actually planning to go through this to see if I could pull out, uh, I need light creams and whites. 
Uh, I don't know if you all remember the other pineapple blocks I had started, the second set. I wanted to work with those. These are a bag of light squares. Look at all of that. Uh, maybe they're rectangles. They're light rectangles. They're not squares. So that's a whole bag. Got some rulers in here. <laughs> that let me know that ain't no square. It's two and a half by three. That's interesting. An interesting size. They must were doing that for a design. But this is the kind of stuff I need so that I can make uh, some more cuts. Like this one is a little too dark. But I need to cut more pieces so that I can do the uh, second set of those pineapple blocks. I can continue to make those. So this stuff will work. I think that's why he sent it because I was saying I had to go into my scrap container and get some fabrics to cut. So he called himself giving me some fabric. That was really nice. So, lots of nice prints here. Is this all? And Kevin, he's really funny about his stash. He, um, this one's kind of green. I'm trying to see if this has got a print on it or if it's plain. It's got a print. You just barely see it. He, um, he doesn't like to have a large quantity of any particular fabric. So anything that he had bought twice or had twice, he kind of gave me the second piece of it. Or if he just didn't like it. He has, he likes stuff that reads one tone and one tone only. That might be a little too dark after I put it over there. This one will work though. So yeah, so that was all that I had planned to um do is just pull out some fabrics and then at some point i'll go press some of this so that i can start getting it cut so i'm just going through here quickly since i don't have anything else to talk about <laughs> look at that i'm not going to use it in this but that's pretty fabric got butterflies on here see this is the kind of stuff he can't use he don't he don't use this kind of stuff he likes more tone on tone blenders very nice I like this one can you all see that very nice I like the color Another green one. Pretty color green, isn't it? For like background stuff. You all, I see comments going up. But I know we like fabric too. <laughs> so I hope you all don't mind me picking out a few pieces I can cut off. Yes. Okay. Just trying to make sure nothing else down here in the bottom that I can use. I do have a quilt I got to put back on my frame. Uh, I gave it to a customer. It was a little small quilt. And... One part I had a bird's nest for some reason, it just, you know, just happened out the blue. And I tried to check the backs of quilts and, you know, she had a busy back and I just missed it. So I'm going to have to work on um, fixing her quilt top for her. So, and I had that. This is the second week now, but like I said, I've been sick the whole time since I did that recording at the end of June. I think that was June 29th, and I was feeling like, 
I'm not feeling too good right after that video, but I was thinking, oh, it's just because it's hot outside, you out here in the sun, and it was just downhill the next morning, I woke up sick as a dog. It's like, oh my gosh. Put a little bit of that in there. Look at this, got dog bones. <laughs> That's cute. I'll put some of that in there. Got angel with a harp. And then dog paws on this one. I'm almost thinking somebody must have given Kevin some fabric or something. Some of it came out of his stash, and I'm thinking, because he would never buy some of this stuff. And so I'm the person he gives the stuff to he doesn't know what to do with. And I just mix it all up and use it everywhere, okay? <laughs> and he asked me, what color is this? What would you consider this to be? <laughs> he is funny. Just taking some of this out of here. All right, I think I got enough to use in the light sections. Might throw some of that in there. And then I had another friend call me. She's going through uh, my friend who her husband passed, and she's been, like, going through some of his stuff, getting rid of stuff. She was cleaning out her basement, and she was also done a little bit in the garage. So she's kind of bouncing all over her house, just doing a little piece here, a little piece there. She probably got a mess everywhere at this point. You know how you start doing something just because you're restless? And uh, she's her thought processes isn't working well when she's sitting just doing nothing. So she's just bouncing around from here to there. And she told me she... Uh, was cleaning out her, you know, cleaning up her sewing studio because it, it had got to the point where she couldn't sew in there because her, she was taking care of her husband at home. So all the equipment that they needed, they were using her room to store all the supplies, the equipment, and then also he needed a, uh, a toilet. And so in order not to have it right in the middle of their bedroom, they ended up just putting it into her sewing studio, which was right next door to the bedroom. So uh, he wouldn't have to go far to go to the restroom. But she was saying that during that time, it got so bad. And so she's in there now cleaning it out. And of all places to start, she decided to start with her fabric, which already was in place when the other stuff was not in place. So it was kind of funny that she went to the fabric. But then she started getting rid of fabric so she gave me two like cracker barrel those recyclable cracker barrel bags big giant plastic bags two of those filled with fabric and blocks and stuff so i'm gonna hold on to it and see if she's gonna be missing any of that stuff because sometimes we make impromptu decisions because of where she is her state of mind uh, with her husband recently passing so I just don't want her to regret not uh, keeping it or something like that later on. So, But I went through it and I said, this girl getting rid of some good stuff. Some of it is old. Well, all of it is old fabric, but some of it is like even older fabric. Like uh, Jeanette Jensen, when she first came out with the Thimbleberry, she loved Thimbleberry. So she had some of that stuff in there. She had... Um, what else does she have in there? Not no not Jenny Buyer. No Jenny Buyer. She had a lot of Walmart fabric in there, but it was when Walmart had really good fabrics. Um before they switched over and just started selling junk. Um, but yeah, and you can still get some good fabric out of Walmart. Now you just gotta be selective in the pieces that you get now, whereas before, you know, almost all the Walmart fabric was good fabric. So I have to touch and feel stuff now. Um, Dee Dee says, T sent you an email today. Did you get it or is it hung up in spam again? I was at my doctor's office. I did not read emails 
early this morning. I did see it at the doctor's office, but I try not to type on emails because every time I type on social media with this phone, no matter what I'm trying to say, that thing always corrects me. But what you were asking me about came today. And I uh, took care of it today, too. So, yes, and I will be responding. I just need to get to my desktop. I've been having so many difficulties with my phone. And I did uh, uninstall YouTube because I had no upgrades. And then when I reinstalled in YouTube on my phone, I'm now able to see that you all are commenting. Because for some reason, I, I didn't think anybody was commenting on my videos. And then when I get to my desktop, I had like 20 or 30 messages I was replying to at one time. So now it is, or it was giving me notifications. So hopefully I'll now know that I got notifications and it won't be like a week or two weeks before I respond to your uh, questions on my YouTube. But So I did upgrade my YouTube. So that might have been part of the problem. And then I also upgraded YouTube on my iPad. So hopefully with me upgrading YouTube, we won't have as many of those issues we were having with it taking me offline and all of that kind of stuff. So we'll see on that. I was scrolling backwards. Hold on. Has anyone ordered design their own fabric with spoon flour? I have not, Eric, but I have had a friend in my scrap quilting club that does spoon flower fabrics all the time because she uh, she does like a lot of ice spy type quilts and so she wants particular things like she's had them do some charlie brown um some harry potter uh what else she's had them do so many things snoopy to, you know any of the charlie brown stuff um so i would say it's a good thing to do So let me go back down. Y'all already know that Dee Dee is here. She says, hi from Michigan. Good to see you, T. <laughs> um, Kimberly is saying, at Lisa, I will send you, send my contact info to Miss T. She can then forward to you. Yeah, I don't think you can, I don't know if you can put links in here. They won't let you, I don't think. Um, <laughs> and Diane talking about he needed to send those to me. She's talking about Kevin with these fabrics, I guess. Um, Mary says that that's a man thing liking one tone unless you're K facet. Yes. Um, you talking about make sure there isn't a chicken. No, there isn't any chickens. He tend to keep those. But I haven't seen him use any of the chicken fabrics that he's received. But he keeps them. And Eric says, hey, Kevin Aquilta, if you read this and need a charity to donate fabric to, remember Eric Older Fabric Foundation. We accept any kind of fabric. That is my friend. You can't take my fabric. I just told you he gives me fabric he don't like. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> my screen keeps jumping, guys, so I'm going back. Angela says, nice celery green. Yes, it's a weird, it was like a weird color green that I hadn't used anymore. I'm looking for it over here in my stack, but I put it back in the bag because I didn't want green in my background. Um, Ellen Campbell is here. Hey, Ellen. She says, hello, T and everyone. How's everyone? What's under all your needles? All you all needles. <laughs> A 
and I still um, have two friends. I'm looking at um, uh, who was it? Kim. If I take my hand off of this thing, it keeps jumping. Um, that's Eric. He's saying that he's con uh, that he uh, donates quilts. I still have those. I have all but I've donated one string quilt already. I do want to put the rest of them up on my deck just to do a quick scan over. Maybe I'll just do that tomorrow and just put them on the inside of the deck on the floor <laughs> so that I'm not having to hang all of those. And then I need to get that videoed. And I still got two friends that haven't given me their quilts. So I'm kind of waiting. I was trying to wait for that, but that hasn't happened. So uh, I want to donate those quilts and get them out of my house because they're taking up too much space. Um, Melissa says that Paisley is gorgeous, yes. Totally off topic, but you can depend on Mary for it, though. <laughs> Talking about QVC has butter sprayer on for $72.35. Good grief. Something for everyone, I guess. <laughs> ah. mm -mm. And uh, Kimberly is talking about Christmas stockings. That's what our gill uh, usually do. We made little small um, Christmas stockings for children homes. And I bet you we probably made over 100 every year. And then we also bought socks. And we bought, um, like, they would put some socks in the stockings. But, like, for the older kids, we would just buy, like, a whole big pack of socks for them just so that they had different socks and didn't have to worry about that it's amazing uh the small things that people are missing when you're looking for organizations to give to that don't even cost a whole lot of money so um we've done that a couple years in a row which was really nice And Cam is saying, I have a bunch of quilt tops made, and when they're finished, I will donate to hospice. And that's a great, another great organization because it'll go to the sick patient. And then after the patient passes, then the other family members have something that they can keep from that experience as well. That's pretty cool. And Kimberly says that the Christmas stockings are quilted, and they're 18 by 24 inch. Linda Griffiths in here saying, hi, T, just got here. Welcome. So, yeah. Um, Diane says, I am almost finished with the UFO. I should be done with Flimsy, but I think it needs another border. Joan Elkin says, I'm trying to make a wall hanging that Mr. Domestic has with the hands in the air. And uh, Elaine Doucette saying, nighty night. Yeah, it's after eight. <laughs> this has been a long day for me. This is uh, yesterday. I got out of bed. I felt I felt better on Monday. Actually, got out of bed for like maybe four hours, and then I got tired, so I got back in bed. But four hours was a good long time considering what I had done before. And then yesterday I got out of bed, I did some, I was doing some cleaning. And so with me having just one lens on my glasses, and I think part of bending over to put stuff up or picking stuff up off the floor that I've dropped, sorting stuff, moving stuff, I was trying to clean off my longhorn table so that I could get ready to fix this lady's quilt. And then I, I got, I think, 
I got a headache from that, so I went back to bed yesterday. <laughs> um, I don't know if I told y'all about the tree saw. I got the tree done, and then this guy came and did the stump, but they never came back and got the stump removal. They did that yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yes, they did that yesterday. And then when they start removing the, st um, the stuff, realize that there's still a little bit more of the stump in the ground. So I need to have the stump removal guy come back out. But my neighbor next door decided to go ahead and get her tree trimmed by the same company that I hired. And I'm telling you, boy, I got a beautiful little neighborhood over here right now. <laughs> I am so happy with the trees. And I, I used to see one squirrel when he cut that other tree and he cut it up real high. I haven't even seen that one squirrel. I am so happy to get rid of the whole host of the squirrel family that was uh, living in my neighborhood. I have not had one squirrel in my yard. I've seen them in the other lady's yard because she's got the tree now. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that tree is gone. My, uh, my driveway is nice and clean. The street is nice and clean. No gumballs all over the road. It, it, oh, Lord, I'm so happy. <laughs> I hate that I killed a tree, a perfectly fine tree. But I'm so glad it's gone. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. See who else is in here. I'm going back. That was Linda Griffiths and just got here. Um, uh, Joan Elkins is reminding everybody to hit the thumbs up before you leave. Or if you're leaving out early, go ahead and hit the thumbs up on your way out. Um, I think Kimberly must be talking about masks and saying that she's done over 6,000 already this year. That's a whole lot of masks, girl. I haven't even made it to 100, and I hope I don't make it to 100. Janet Mackerel says, T, have you finished your birthday qu block quilt from last year? I, I get asked that a couple of times, and I think I just keep answering it in the middle of videos. Um... I have not worked on it because I thought that I was going to work on it at the retreat that I had scheduled in May and then as well as working on it at the T quilts retreat that was scheduled for June. But since both of those retreats were canceled, I have not been able to work on it. And it's because it's going to be a double size quilt. And the only place I can lay that out is out on my deck. And as soon as I lay something out on my deck, a nice wind gust comes and blows everything out into my lawn and then I'm out there picking up blocks and chasing blocks so I haven't I don't have a big enough space and I didn't want to just start at the center and work my way out I wanted to really lay out all the blocks so that I could mix up uh, the coloring because they're all different colors and I just have a feeling that if I just start sewing it together that it's I'm gonna be my coloring is not gonna be equal and I was trying to do something balanced. But if I, I don't even know. I had another retreat that I'm supposed to be the guest speaker at in October. Uh, but that's fall. And, uh, you know, we already got higher numbers of this V going around. So I don't even know if I'm going to go to that retreat in October. So I was hoping that the numbers would die down by now. But that has not happened. But, um... I have a family member that just passed yesterday in Alabama. And my mom, of course, want me to drive her and my aunt. And I told them I just wasn't going to do it. So if I'm not going to a funeral for a family member that I really, really, you know, want to support their fam, you know, their family, it's that immediate branch when I say their family. Those are my cousins. It's their, my cousin's grandmother has passed. So, and it's on my, my uncle's wife, who I call my aunt, it's her mother, and uh, I really want to support her because she supports everybody else, but I just can't do it. They are going to, they got some facility that's super huge, and they've got chairs set 
six feet apart. But for me, that's not enough. I just can't do it. I have uh, issues already with my sinus. And a lot of people thought that maybe I had contacted the V when I said that I was sick. But I, I did not. It was just uh, my whole equilibrium and everything was thrown off because I think, like I said, I had glasses issues. I have had headaches. Um, and then I also have, I have a very low tolerance for medications. And so I was heavily on my sinus meds because if I missed one day, I was in trouble. I mean, I can immediately feel and clamp down like a, a, like a flap is closing on my throat where I can't breathe. So when I'm taking medicine back to back, and then like I told you all, I had just switched back to a particular med. So I have to get, my body has to get used to it. So I was just having three issues all at one time. So, but I'm hoping I want, well, and we don't even know if we're going to have a quilt show <laughs> in uh, 2021. Because that'll be September of 2021. So we're not even sure if we're going to have a quilt show. We haven't even met as a gill and don't plan to meet until September. We're not even doing any Zoom meetings or anything. And I couldn't understand how we're going to meet in September. Because it's supposed to come back in the fall. So we have not met since uh, we, our last meeting was in February. So we may not have a quilt show next year because we haven't had anybody working on that. And that takes a lot of work and a lot of planning. Even um, we do have a raffle quilt committee that was supposed to collect fabric for the raffle quilt. Um, but September is when our raffle quilt for next year should have been pieced by then. So I don't know what we're going to do. Um... June says that she's putting a crochet border on a receiving blanket. That's from the uh, question of what are people, what's under people's needles. Uh, Mary says, T, don't do too much too quickly. I'm not. I'm taking my time. Like I said, I've been feeling better this week, and I've just been trying to do, like I did the four hours where I was up uh, on Monday, just trying to test my equilibrium to see how long I could stay up. And uh, yesterday I did a couple hours, but I was bending and picking stuff up and down. I was actually trying to clean up areas yesterday and I was sorting through fabrics that I had gotten from my friend and all of that. So I was constantly going up and down and I realized that I was getting a little dizzy. So I went and uh, went back to bed. And then today I stayed in bed until noon until I had to get up and, and shower so I can go to my doctor's appointment at three. So I made sure I wasn't rushing. And then I also, then I left there and went to one place trying to get glasses. And so then I came back home and I said, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and go online. <laughs> so I got me something to eat before I got online. And um, I'm gonna go right back into bed once I get off here, so. Um. Kimberly says, I will ask Miss T to forward you my contact as well. Okay, you guys send it to me. Adrian Reyes is here, says hello T and everyone. They just ground. They just ground. I don't know what Diane's trying to tell me. Patricia Carlucio is here, says hi Miss T. Hi Patricia, welcome. Oops, they grind the stumps down rather than pull them out and leave a hole yeah and that's what i'm trying to get them to do is to um because you know when old trees you have old trees in your yard they make a mound so they were also the guy went down at least this far on that tree that i saw but there are certain spots where because the uh grinding was the it's kind of like making um mulch it was going over the stump, he just missed some areas that he needs to come back and get. Uh, we could try to work and get it out, but it's going to take us a, a series of pouring stuff that would kill the roots and stuff. Because you can still see some of the um, tree roots. You can still see some hard parts of the stump. And so the guy that I hired, I hired for him to make it so that my yard would be flat because I didn't want to have to do that part. All I want to do in the fall is come in and put my seeds and my hay out there and I just want to water. That's all I want to do. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Diane's laughing at me to my T quilts. I have a mental picture of you running all over the yard trying to catch your blocks. You got that right. But the nice thing is, uh, ninety percent of the gate belongs to me, so everything is in case. So the gates all the way around my yard. There's other yards that don't have gates. Um. Teresa is saying good night. Thank you so much for coming. She says stay safe to everyone. Uh, I'm going backwards because my thing jumped again. I've been cleaning and working on my quilting frame. My sewing room is coming together nicely. That's nice, Ellen. Um, uh, Oh, Kimberly saying, not mad she made 6,000 of the stockings. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and Mary is saying, good for you at T. That's how people are getting the virus, funerals, churches, besides beaches. Yes, and that's what I was trying to tell my mom because she was saying, well, won't we all be, um, won't we all have on masks? Because I've made her mask. And she said, and I said, yes, I understand what you're saying. But I said, but we're also inside of a place where people are going to be talking and singing. And uh, people in the audience could, you know, they say the more you project, like the higher you raise your voice, the more that it goes out. And the mask don't stop you, stop it from going out. It just stops it so that it stops closer but if something lasts in the air for say four hours or whatever then it's in the air everybody's is in the air and so i just don't want to be involved so i will not be one of the ones that are on your statistic as far as getting it at church <laughs> that will not be me uh, i will not be getting it by going to family reunions that will not be me and uh i'm just gonna have to you know, do my excuses. I'm just going to send a nice card. I'll make a card since they've got to travel. They're, they're leaving tomorrow. So they're all going to be traveling. Then I'll go ahead and just make a card and send it to my cousin's house. So they'll have it when they get back home. But I'm just going to have to send them a card because I can't do it. I just can't do it. Um... Georgia says, T, I'm suffering from the same sickness today. My head is swimming, nausea, and headache. And, yeah, and that's basically what I had, and I couldn't understand. I hardly, I do sometimes get sinus headaches, but it's very rare. And so when I got the headache and then I had, like, my, I felt like I was going to just faint or fall out or something. I was like, oh, no, I got to go to bed. <laughs> I gotta go to bed. And you know, it kind of plays with your head with the V being out and you keep thinking, did I get the V or something? So, you know, it kind of play with you, but I did not have that. Uh, my sinus meds did work. It was just that when I tried to stop taking them, like I'll, if I take one every day in the morning, then I'd say, okay, I'm not going to take one today just so I, because the medicine was making me stay in bed and I go, I'm not going to take it. Well, by 1 p.m., I was like feeling my flap trying to close over my throat. So I'm like, okay, I got to take the medicine. Then when I take the medicine, I got to go back to bed. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, it is, it's a weird sensation and it kind of plays with you when you're dealing with other stuff going on in the world. You think that is what you got, but I'm still saying, no, I don't have it, you know. But, you know, it does cross your head. You talking about no cool show in 2021. Let me get Debbie online. I don't know if we're going to have a show or not, but we'll see. Hey, T, can you make me a tie-dye tank top like the one you're wearing? <laughs> I would have to order a shirt. So the next time I place an order, Eric, um, what size, Eric? Because you tall. <laughs> I think this is unisex. Um, so let me know what size. I don't think it's like a male or female. Most of the things I buy, I try to buy a unisex unless I'm just straight out buying women's v-necks. And I do know that there are male v-necks, but most men do not that I know or that order from me don't order men v-necks. So uh, let me know your size. June says, I just had a tree taken out and 
Then now we had to fill the hole in and water grass seed. Now I hope it starts to grow soon. Been just about a week. And see, that's what I don't want to do in the middle of summer now. I was trying to get this tree out earlier in the year and couldn't get anybody I wanted in my yard because, you know, I'm real picky because I see the other kind of work they do. And then if you ain't working right, I don't want you in my yard. And uh, I got to the point where if it's 90 degrees, it's just not, or higher, it's better not to even plant the seeds right now because you'd have to spend morning and night, afternoon, in the evening watering grass because you can't water in the heat of the day and you don't want your grass to burn when the sun comes up so it's a big chore trying to grow some grass and you know i just might go somewhere and hire somebody to come do it to put out some sod i haven't decided yet i might just have them redo my whole front yard because it's it's pretty small the tree took up most of the yard i'd say about 40 percent of my yard by the time they get through with this tree because they've you know, spread at the dirt and they digging in, you know, so it's getting bigger than what the tree stump was. So I'm, I'm about 40% of my yard has uh, been messed up with this tree. So I'm thinking maybe I might just want to have them come in and just put sodding, put sod out. And I know I've got to water it too. So that's going to be one of my other options. Uh, I don't know where you are at June, but grass seeds won't grow. It's too hot. Yep. You got to keep it wet, and then you're going to burn it. So you got to watch it. It must be something going on around the headache business for a couple of days today. What's much better? So June's headed too. Uh, and see, and I put the headache and dizziness off on my glasses, so maybe it was something sinus-related. And like I said, I was out messing with the mulch uh, from the tree stump because I was trying to save some of it to put in, my, uh, in an area in my backyard. Um, yep, Mary's saying that she was kind of scared for school since they made they came out and said like singing and stuff like that helps protrude the virus out into the room. And you're so right. And I don't even understand how they're talking about opening up all these schools there, uh, telling our teachers and stuff to get back, uh, to get ready to go back to school. And uh, you all haven't even, the numbers are still going up higher. You haven't figured out how to, uh, we don't have a vaccine. So I don't understand how they're supposed to go sit in classrooms that are already overcrowded. And how are you going to social distance? It's, it's just crazy. My friend, this is from Jones, says my friend in Northern Michigan tells me about the Amish near her. No one had the virus until Ohio people came out for a funeral. And one person from Ohio brought the virus, and two weeks later, everyone was sick. See? I'm, I'm not going. I do feel guilty. Um, the family that's, has the, that's closest to this death has been so supportive of everything that has happened in my immediate family grouping. And I feel really bad about not going, but that's just not something that I can worry about right now and I did call my cousin I talked to her today and I uh, expressed my condolences and then I told her about you know and I asked her how were they that's how I found out how they were having the services because I'm like aren't we not supposed to be having funerals and stuff you know but they don't have a choice um, for them uh, but I'm gonna make the choice for me I understand that they don't have a choice if it was my mom I would be at the service you know what I'm saying if it was my grandmother I would be at the service I would be one of those 10 people, but I wouldn't have a funeral for more than like those 10 people like that. <laughs> and Eric, come on, my size, whatever the largest size you can get. So you want like a 5X or a 6X? <laughs> I have suppliers that can give me whatever sizes I need, okay? That is too funny. Angela says, air quality is bad. I've been taking a Benadryl cap, and that helps my sinuses. And Benadryl really knocks me out. And when I get really, really bad, I do have to take Benadryl. But I was refusing. With me being so dizzy and stuff, I refuse to take any Benadryl. But yes, but Benadryl does help 
some that is too funny um what is exotic what you say <laughs> I think you all had the exotic what uh Mary is Mary's at it again Mary says I just just ordered every staff member two masks that tells me we're all supposed to go back to work. Ain't that something? And then talking about, no, Mary, it's Columba Warbers of the snoot. <laughs> the air conditioning system will circulate the virus in the schools and all these closed buildings, no windows open, so folks are going to get sick. I recommend homeschooling for my grands. Yes, and that's the other way that it passes. Uh, the air the air ducts are pushing this stuff out into the room. So that was what was happening in China, how it spread so fast in the restaurants out there. And Mary's talking about epizootic is a sickness of any kind, laughing out loud. That's funny. Hello, Eric. He's back to quilting. He had a video on YouTube. Adrian says... Your loved one understands and would not want you to dispose along with your mom. Keep her safe. She has decided that my mom has decided that she is going. She has had my aunt, the two, you know, I told you I took the 79 and the 80-year-old. That was last year when I took them to Cancun. So them two are on a mission to, they already got their tickets. My aunt has had her daughter book them tickets and they are going, okay? So when my mom come back, I'm going to put her on quarantine. <laughs> so I will only be talking to her on the phone for a couple weeks to make sure she don't bring this V back to me. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I can't, you know, she's a grown woman. She can make her own decisions. Now, my mom has not been anywhere. She went to the store once. Uh, since March and she only went out like the end of May or early June I think just because she wanted she was tired of being at home she would go out on her patio but she wouldn't go anywhere else she hasn't been to church she hasn't been anywhere my mother went to, goes to church twice a week and she ain't been to church okay but she's gonna go get on the plane and go um to this funeral services so i'm just gonna make sure she's taken care of as far as giving her making sure she has enough mask i I'll make sure i reiterate how she's to wash her mask after she wears them and then i'll um give her a hand you know the pocket size hand sanitizer to take with her as well so <sighs> the filthy company is working on house HVAC systems with N95 in it. That's pretty cool. I did write them and ask them to, if I could do a collab with them that I'd already done a video. I haven't heard anything, so I'm guessing that the answer is no, but that's okay. I won't be ordering any more, though. <laughs> uh, and I know I sent quite a few people over there to buy the filthy filters, so... And Cheryl talking about she slept for several days with one benefit drill. I can understand. Uh, Linda says, our son is going to homeschool his daughters. The virus is rampant here in Southern California. Yes, I would highly recommend it if I had a child. Um, it's just hard for some families. I understand what's going on when people have to work in order to keep the roof over their heads because they, they are predicting that we're going to have very high numbers of evictions that are going to about to be coming up. Um, soon as these court systems start taking this paperwork. So I fully understand, you know, you got to work. So you're between a rock and a hard place. Some funerals, just the immediate family or at the funeral and everyone else can see it through closed circuit. And that's what, that's what I tried telling my mom, but I don't even think that they're going to, they're having the actual funeral. So it's not going to be recorded like that. But uh, laughing out loud, putting mom in the corner. Yes, I am, Diane. She's made her decision, so I have to make mine after that. I love her, and I love me. I want to make sure we're both safe. So if something happened to you, that I'm still able to take care of you. So I want to make sure she's, uh, if she's not sick, 
Uh, I don't want her to get me sick and then we both sick and this family is really screwed up, okay? <laughs> we'll have to make Ray take off work and Ray love to go to work. <laughs> uh, Angela says, you need herbs, herbals. I'll put geranium oil around my eyes before bedtime. And Angela's saying also prayers up for your mom. Yes, I'm going to pray uh, on them the whole time they're gone. I'm going to pray for their whole process. And so, yeah, and my mom has a scooter. My aunt needs to have a wheelchair. So they'll have escorts. They won't be waiting in any kind of lines or anything like that. And then uh, got people on the other end that are going to pick them up. We got people on this end that's going to drop them off. So they won't be struggling uh, for anything but... You know, just two, they 80 and 81 now. <laughs> they are two, they are a hot mess too. What do you think about herd immunity? Remember mom's doing that with uh, chicken pox. I don't know anything about it. You know, and the funny thing is I was one of those kids. Everybody in my family caught the chicken pox and the measles. And I'm sitting there, my mom trying to throw me in the mix so I can get it. And I didn't catch any of that stuff. Just weird. I'm I'm one of the weird ones. <laughs> mm -mm. And the V can attach to your hair and clothes, per my doctor, yes. And that's why they recommend, like, uh, people that, um, especially working in healthcare, but whenever you go out and you know somebody, you've been around somebody that was 100% truly exposed, that you need to go in and, uh, you know, take those clothes off, wash and stuff like that. And that's another reason why my hair has been up, because I would make sure that my hair was up so that it wasn't getting contaminated, and then I just put on another head wrap, you know. I had hair wrap that I wear outside, and the one I wore in the house, I would repeat. But if I wore it outside, it went immediately into the wash. And I have about maybe 20 or so head wraps, probably more than that. Um, I understand they're doing that in Switzerland or somewhere related. Uh, I think she was talking about the, uh, the herb uh, immunity, herd immunity. Um... Diane says, make sure they take her chair or rent her rent one for your mom. My mom has a, her own scooter, electric sco scooter. So all she's got to do is charge it once here, and it'll last her the whole time she's gone. It'll last her, like, when we were on vacation, she used it all day. And it will, it lasted her, like, three to four days, all day straight. Um, so she'll definitely get through the weekend with... Um, her battery but she'll take her charger just in case but she'll be okay um uh, cheryl says i ended up doing a viral doctor's appointment instead of going home to texas that's a good idea as well i was wishing they could do something with my eyes because i hate to go but as long as these people are practicing social distancing they got plenty of hand sanitizer everybody has a mask on and i'm kind of okay uh, I, I hated to go to the eye doctor. That was the one I, I'm not the eye doctor, the dentist. That's the one I hated to go to, but I went. Um, yeah, the dentist was the one I did not want to do. Judy says, you can't do anything about them going to the funeral, but it is a very bad decision. Error in planes circulates. Bad idea to get on a plane. Yes, I fully understand. I have told them. Um, I have told, well, I haven't told them. I told my mother. <laughs> uh, you know, I can only uh, advise. I, she wanted me to originally drive them down. And uh, to Birmingham is an eight-hour ride. With my mom and my aunt, it's a 12-hour ride. I wasn't going to do it. I am not going to do it because the longer we're on the road, the more we got to stop at rest areas and places where you can get more contamination. And so I just didn't want to do it. And um, 
Mary is saying, too bad Kevin isn't here to tell us about the airplane air. You know, it depends on which airline you're flying on. Some of the airlines, at first they weren't using the center seats, and then they started back putting people into the center seats. So, yeah. Good night, Joan. She says, thanks to all of you for making it interesting night. Nice. Stay safe, everyone. Email me the name of the place you get those head wrap. It's uh, Tony, T-O-N-I, daily, D-A-L-E-Y.com. TonyDaily.com. And she has like different colors, like her stock changes. So sometimes she'll have some colors this time and then she come out with new colors. And then she's actually in Canada, but her shipping is very reasonable into the U.S. Kim saying, good night, everyone. Thank you for making this a nice evening with friends. Take, take care, stay safe. God bless. Thank you, Kim. Bye-bye. I watched the online funeral of a family member that died, and after it was over, the people pulled off their mask and hugged each other and kissed, took pictures. <laughs> she said, there is a disconnect. You are so right, because it is very difficult to attend any kind of family reunion or funeral services where you haven't seen people that are coming from all over the USA. You do hug people. It's just one of those automatic things. But, and that's why another reason I just don't want to get wrapped all up into that. Mary says, my dentist says they have follies, folly safe procedures since the 80s with the advent of AIDS. And that's the only reason that I went because I said, that's the only place I go in a dentist office where almost everybody in there is wearing a mask. The receptionist may not have a mask on, but everybody else does. But when I went the last time, the, they had went to electronic check-in, and so uh, so you have to do the screen thing, but they had a hand sanitizer attached to the screen thing so you could use it immediately afterwards. And then they also had the receptionist, her new job, since she wasn't doing check-in over there, she was actually checking everybody's temperature. So I did like that. And they also checked my temperature today at uh, my eye doctor, my ophthalmologist. So I got checked there. And Mary is saying to Angela, good grief, I don't get it, uh, about people taking off these masks and stuff. So, Gina Connor says, Tina, T, I worked 40 years for an airline. The air is recirculated throughout the cabin, cabin, so you're breathing the same air. Prayer be with your family flying. And I fully understand. Um, Quilting for the Soul says, good night, T. That's uh, Sarah, and everyone needs to go. Be safe. Uh, God bless y'all. So, yeah, that's it. So, we are at 842, guys. <laughs> I kind of felt like I'd give you all a longer one since I missed for the past uh, week, the two sessions, last Wednesday and this Saturday. I thought I was going to make it on Saturday, but I still was. I thought I would be better by Saturday since I had started feeling a little weird on Monday. But I just wanted to make sure that I was in are strong enough to stay through a whole uh, broadcast, so to say. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and end here. Thank you all so much for hanging in here with me while we just basically chatted tonight. Uh, Saturday, I'll uh, come back hopefully 9 p.m. Central Standard Time so that we can make it a little later for the people on the West Coast. So I will see you all then. Diane saying good night, people. Please stay safe. <laughs> Mary talking about when she went to the dentist, they put a sticker on her with her temperature, and she went to the grocery store and forgot all about it. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But that gave a lot of uh, other people a chance to say good night to everybody. So thank you all again, and I will be seeing you all soon. And I did make a video on how I make strings uh, from like quilt from leftover fabrics and stuff. So uh, maybe I'll get that edited. I haven't been back. <laughs> like I said, I've been back in the bed, but I'm not going to do any more today. I, I have an appointment tomorrow at one. 
So I'll see how I'm feeling after as far as strength wise after that appointment tomorrow. Maybe I'll get another video edited for you guys over the weekend and get it uploaded. So, but that's it. Thank you all so much. As usual, stay blessed and stay safe, everybody. See you next time, hopefully on Saturday, okay? <laughs>